Greetings. Today on this channel, we are going to do something really neat. I'm Monty McKinnon, and we're building acoustic guitars here. So what do you say we spin that intro, and I'll come right back and show you what we're up to. All right, we are back. This is a piece of cutoff wood, which I'm going to end up gluing today onto the back of the top of the guitar, which is behind me here. And in order to do that, I'm going to use a Dremel tool. The reason I'm going to use the Dremel tool is because not everybody has a spare router and a jig set to go at a moment's notice to cut circles and whatnot. So since not everybody has this, a lot of people do have a Dremel tool. So I have cut a hole in here and I have measured this. Now, I'm gonna make the hole, the sound hole, about three and seven eighths inches, maybe a tad under that. So I want about five eighths of an inch of a ring running around the sound hole to firm it up, steady it. And we're going to cut the X bracing into that like we did in the last guitar, and you'll see that. So what I'm going to do right now, I've got a pin in here, and I'm going to take this, if I can get it on there, there we go, and I'm going to route that out right now. So why don't I do that, and then I'll come back and show you where I am. Well, here we are. We have cut the circle out, and the circle is going to go on the back of the top right in here. So when we cut out the circle in here, we'll have a little ring running around here, which we're going to end up cutting with the X braces and the cross brace here. So you'll see all of that coming up shortly. Now, I'd like to show you the deflection test. Now, people will ask, how thin do you take your tops? This one is about 1,100, maybe a little less. I have a five pound weight here, and what I do, I've got these rods, which are quarter inch rods, set at each end of the top, and I set this in the middle, and I look to see that it comes down just down and touches the top of the bench. When that happens, I know I've got it the right thickness. And the reason for that is, remember, the top is a drum, and it's going back and forth, and it's got quite a bit of flexibility to it. There's some good sound in it, so it's not looking bad at all. So that's, that's done, and we'll glue that up shortly. So I'd like to show you just how we did the sound port here on the side. And as you'll see, the first thing I did was put some green tape over here. And then what I did is I measured the center line down here, taking into account the fact that I don't have the top on here. So I measured the thickness of the back, and I doubled it. I know that this could be off slightly. That's not an issue because I can always add another hole and that would just fix that up with nothing flat. What I did next was I took a piece of graph paper and I drew out using the French curves. These are French curves. You can buy these at hobby shops and whatnot. They've got little ovals in them and they're curved around here. There's another one to look at. Hard to see because of their clear plastic. I don't know if against my shirt you can see it or not. But I use those to draw the various pieces in here. And you can see those clearly on the graph paper. What I did next is I used a coping saw and I wasn't very successful with that. I did it, but it was hard. I've never done a sound port like this before. I've always had the body together when I've done the sound port. So this was a new experience, but I knew I had to do it this way with the uh, coping saw to be able to get it in here. And oh, it with, with my shaking hands, it literally took me about 20 minutes to get the blade in. And, and I thought, no, I'm not going to do that anymore. That, that's absolutely crazy. But here you'll see where I've, I've drilled a hole and I'm cutting it out. And I worked away at that. It took me quite a while. And I did the first hole here that you can see. And the very top of it, I simply drilled a hole through it and then worked into that hole and then smoothed it out. Then I did the second one. This took me quite a while to do this. And I've got this looking pretty good. It's smooth on the side and it's, it's 
crisp at the corner. That is, it's like 90 degrees. And there we have uh, another look when I'm progressing even further. And then I get down here to the point where I've got all of it done. And then I take off the, the tape. And this is what I'm left with, as you can see. Now, this is the saw that I made. This saw is simply a piece of wood. It's a coping saw blade. I drilled a hole in the end of it, filled it with some epoxy glue, shoved the blade in there and let it dry. Now I have a small saw that I can get into all these holes and do that kind of work later on because trying to find something small with a little length of about three inches here is just impossible. Uh, like, there's some out there. I thought um, Exacto would have something like this, but I couldn't find it. Anyway, I made my own and it works just perfectly. So that's how I ended up getting the sound port. Now let's talk about the top. The top, as you can see here, is got the shellac all around the sound hole and whatnot. And here you'll see a lot of people have Dremel tools. So I decided I would do this with a Dremel instead and see how that worked out. And it worked out very well. The next thing was once I had the groove cut, I then put my binding around the inside and the outside. And in the middle, I put a piece of Teflon because glue doesn't stick to Teflon. And as you can see, I'm using the Starbond thin um, super glue here. And I run that around to hold the pieces together at the side. So when I put the shell in, it's all gonna work. Speaking of shell, here we are adding some shell to the rosette around the sound hole. Once that is done, I then flood that whole area with glue and then I sand it down. And once it's sanded, we're ready to go. Now, as you can see, we are glued up here. I've got weights pressed on here because we've cut our circle and it's all glued. And there's nothing more for me to do here today except to wait for this to dry so that's it for me today thank you very much for joining me and by all means please think about subscribing and hitting the like button if you like this pass it on to your friends i'm sure there's got to be somebody out there that would like to see this and uh, if you have your parents that are like me seniors and getting into that vintage and they're retired or they're about to retire, they need a hobby, this is the perfect hobby. You can buy these in kits and, and you can just assemble the kits so you don't have to worry about buying bending machines and all of that kind of thing. If I was going to do it over again, that's exactly what I would do. The only thing I'm disappointed in is that I found this late in life. I wish I was in my 30s when I discovered making guitars. I would have switch careers and gone into just simply making guitars and selling them. It's great fun. Well, thank you again for joining me. Don't forget to check out the links down below and I'll see you in the next video. And by the way, get yourself some English breakfast tea. This is decaf tea, even cold, because I finished this almost. It's still very good. Get yourself some. I get my decaf loose tea from the tea house. That's H A U S, the tea house.com. And you can check them out. No, they're not sponsoring me, but they have great English breakfast tea. Check it out. All right, we'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.